Network investigates the societal stereotype that associates brilliance with men more than women. My collaborators and I were interested in studying this stereotype because it's likely to affect women's career aspirations. Lots of things go into the career that one ultimately chooses, and one of the most important considerations we take into account is whether we are going to be successful. You don't want to pick a line of work that you are guaranteed to struggle, and because of the stereotype associating brilliance with males, women may perceive themselves as less likely to be brilliant, and as a result, they may also doubt if they are going to be successful in any career or jobs that requires brilliance. We believe it's important to explore whether and how early young kids start learning these stereotypes associating brilliance with males. If it's quite early, then it will have lots of time and opportunities to affect the kind of careers that girls perceive themselves as being suited for. In our studies, we tested five to seven-year-olds because that is the age at which children have been shown to internalize some similar gender stereotypes. Which seems to us like a good starting point. We first investigated the developmental trajectory of children's beliefs about which gender is really, really smart. This is just a child-friendly way of talking about brilliance. So to find out, we ask kids a number of questions. For example, we told them a story about a really, really smart person. But we were careful to leave out any clues about the gender of the person. After the story, we showed them four pictures: two males and two females, and we asked them to guess which one of this is the person in the story. We looked for whether they picked males or females as being really smart. Our results revealed a very interesting developmental difference. At the age of five, boys and girls' answers are quite similar. Both boys and girls tend to pick the people of their own gender as being really, really smart. However, starting at age of six, girls became less likely to do this than boys. Girls pick the females as being really smart less often than boys pick males. And this may be the beginning of the stereotype we see in adults. Next, we ask. Whether internalizing this stereotype influences the kinds of activities that kids are interested in doing. To test this, we showed five, six, and seven-year-olds a novel activity, and we also told them this activity is only for kids who are really, really smart. And then we asked them a set of questions to assess their interest for this activity. And the results show something very similar to children's beliefs about brilliance. At the age of five, both boys and girls were equally interested in this activity that was set for smart kids. However, girls became less interested in this activity than boys at age of six and seven. Well, it's only natural to ask where do kids get these ideas from, and why do they emerge at the age of six, not earlier or later? At this point, though, we don't have good answers to these questions. We are working on to find out the answers, but we can't say anything firm yet. Just a couple of important points to keep in mind. First of all, we need to be cautious about placing too much emphasis on the exact ages. In our studies, we tested a particular sample of kids in a particular community, so it remains to be seen how our results generalize to other communities across the U.S. and in the world. Second, if there is one thing we can say with confidence, it is children don't get these ideas about who is brilliant by looking around at who is doing well at school. In our study, we also tested if children think boys or girls do better at school, and everyone agrees that girls do better at school. And yet, that doesn't seem to matter. The relationship between children's beliefs about brilliance and their beliefs about doing well at school seems very weak to non-existent.